Hey folks, Tim Miller here. And I, I got to tell you, um, after today's news report and yesterday's, I, I couldn't not put this video together. Um, just to let you know the truth of the situation we're in, in the U S now, many of you may know that, you know, I was a Marine for 27 years, five on active and the rest in the reserves doing counterintelligence. I was a police officer. I was a secret service agent. But then after that, I went to work for the Department of Homeland Security following the 9-11 attacks. I was assigned to the FBI's National Joint Terrorism Task Force. We monitored cases all over the country. And I have to tell you, folks, I'm sounding the alarm as loud and as hard as I can. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news. Yesterday, across three different U.S. cities, there were folks arrested for plotting terrorism. By the way, folks that walked right across the border, folks that came in unscreened. We'll get into this in a little bit, but folks... I couldn't be more concerned about what I'm seeing. And I got to tell you, if we're not careful, we're going to wake up to some pretty horrible things. And I just, let's start with today's news because I think, folks, this says it all. Members of this department make gun arrests, weapons arrests, arrests for knives every day. But uh, arrests of this magnitude, the amount of ammunition NYPD uh, paraphernalia in the car was significant. Well, arms to the teeth, that's the quote from the NYPD. Pulling over an SUV in New York, Queens, New York, what they found inside was nothing short of disturbing. There was a lot inside there, too. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. I'm Bill Hemmer. Welcome to our program. Hello to you good morning. on this summer day. Good morning. I'm Dana Perino, and this is America's Newsroom. You know, there's a there's questions about just mm -hmm. regular policing mm -hmm. and whether that's fair. Yeah. But this is one of the reasons that they do it, because the early morning traffic stop may have derailed a terror attack. Police pulled over the suspect because his license plate was blacked out. And they took a look inside, and what they found was alarming. Yeah, sure is. NYPD body armor, a loaded 9 millimeter, nine loaded magazines, two axes, multiple knives, a whip, a stun gun, and a baton. Reportedly etched into that baton was the Arabic word for God forgive me. The suspect identified as a 27-year-old from Queens. The New York Post reporting he shared jihadist views online. So this happening after ICE arrested eight migrants this week with ties to ISIS. All eight crossed the border illegally, and the FBI raising concerns the war in the Middle East could inspire attacks here at home. Brian Yenis says the story. He leads our coverage now. Brian, good morning. Bill and Dana, good morning. The suspect has been identified as Judd Sanson. The 27-year-old is not facing terrorism-related charges, at least not yet, as they investigate the possible motive or intent. Sanson is facing criminal weapons possession charges and for having an obscured license plate. Police say at 1.30 in the morning yesterday, four NYPD officers patrolling in Queens, New York, spotted a black Ford Explorer with a blacked-out license plate. The officers pulled the car over and inside discovered a disturbing cache of weapons and indications of a possible terror attack plot. Sanson was traveling with a V for Vendetta mask. That's an anti-government symbol. NYPD uniform items, including handcuffs and a bulletproof vest, an orange MTA reflective vest, a uniform worn by employees that work in the city's subway system. In addition to finding all of those weapons, the loaded 9 millimeter handgun, the nine loaded magazines, knives, a stun gun. The New York Post reports Sanson, who has been living in his car and used drugs, shared extreme jihadist views online. Police finding ominous messages etched into a baton found in the car that read, you left me no choice, I am sorry, and a message in Arabic that read, God forgive me. All of this happening after FBI Director Christopher Wray warned this week about our nation's vulnerability to terrorism. When I sat here last year, I walked through how we were already in a heightened threat environment. Folks, I got to tell you, I, I, I don't know how to be any clearer. Here we go again. Director Wray, uh, you know, the warnings are so great. Well, no joke. Look at who's been invited into our country like they're our friends. 
and they're here for one reason, and that's to kill us. Folks, I, I, we use the term in the military inside of the wire because that's the most horrifying term we can describe. If you're in a safe environment in the military, that's called inside of the wire. Well, when the enemy in Vietnam, they called them sappers. They would sneak in. They would sit, slit your throat while you were sleeping. They would attack you when you weren't ready. They did things that were horrible because you weren't alert and aware. You thought you were safe. Well, welcome to the new America. And folks, I, I don't want to over alarm anybody, but I got to tell you, I think we're in a season now in our nation unparalleled in history. Oh, well, Tim, what about World War II? Yeah, here's the fact about World War II. My dad was a World War II veteran, and he talked about how once the Japanese actually attacked us, that all Americans united, everybody came together because we loved our country and wanted to defend it. Folks, that's not the U.S. we live in now. Now, I want to walk through very, very quickly how fortunate we were, how, thank God, despite defund the police, despite the rhetoric of hating the police, despite painting the police as these um, horrible, mentally ill, power-hungry people, four NYPD officers out there did their job, and they stopped the guy. And I will tell you with certainty they stopped a terrorist attack. But let's look at what happened during that stop. Number one, they identified all kinds of things which screamed to us they stopped an attack. Now, I don't know what the intel was for the other eight. Uh, uh, ISIS affiliations, really? I mean, those that would love to decapitate our children? Those that would love to target us. Oh, by the way, the leaders know this because they're warning, 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 and warning. Am I upset? You betcha. I cannot believe that our leadership would put policies in place knowing that innocent Americans are going to be slaughtered. And by the way, folks, innocent Americans are going to be slaughtered. It's just a matter of time. Now, I don't know if YouTube's going to let me keep this up. I know that this is... This is challenging at every level, but let me walk through some of what I see and why my concerns are so high. Number one, I learned after 9-11, it's very unusual for us to be able to identify operations before they actually happen and to thwart those operations. Why do I say that? Because these guys are not stupid. They practice operational security in their communications and their pre-operational surveillance. They do all those things because they know that U.S. law enforcement and the intelligence community is watching. So the fact that we've had two different events that were thwarted, it to me, is miraculous. And it shows you there are still a lot of good patriotic uh, law enforcement guys out here that love our country and want to protect innocent people. But let's look at this stop for a second. Now, I want you to notice that you may just kind of blow by some of the things, but he had NYPD paraphernalia, you know, a body armor hat. He also had subway vests. Well, why is that so important? It's because he's inside the wire, folks. He understands that, that those things may or may not cause people to pay attention to him so that he can do what it is he set out to do. And for those of you saying, oh, well, we're not sure. Yes, we are. He wrote a note apologizing. He had pro um, radical extremism language on his um, baton and, 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 and certainly ideology. But here's what's also scary, folks. Don't miss this. It's aligned with the face masks of Antifa. Now, folks, this should cause all of us to go, wait a minute. The left's been telling us that Antifa, all they want are just, you know, to, to, you know, have a more socialist directed government. No, they don't. They want to kill us. They hate us. They hate America. 
They hate Israel. They hate the police. They love some of their leaders nowadays because their leaders have fallen right in. As a matter of fact, wasn't too long ago as many of them were burning U.S. citizens that our leaders were trying to pay bond to get them out. Folks, you're going to have to pick a jersey. You're going to have to decide whose team you are. And if you're a Democrat listening to this and this doesn't infuriate you because you love your country, you better think about it. There are other issues out here. I'm not arguing that. There are issues on the left, issues on the right. But guess what? If you don't stand for your country, if you don't protect your country, demand that your leadership protects our country. Because, folks, I, I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I'm going to tell you. Bad things are in store. When you look at the weapons that were seized by NYPD uh, and the methodology and the thinking, if, if you do any thinking at all, any critical thinking, you have to ask yourself, why did he have each one of those things? Why? It's because it fits into a plan. Now, I know there are going to be some out there that are going to go, oh, he's just mentally ill. No, he's ideologically driven, just like Antifa, just like ISIS, just like Al-Qaeda. They have a focus, folks, and that's to kill America. I, I just, I am finding it hard to wrap my head around this duplicity with some Americans, and I'm not going to be silent anymore, you know. If you vote for policies that open our border, inviting our enemies to come in and slash our throats and kill us and bomb us, it, it, it doesn't take too much common sense to recognize that because of our leaders' decisions, Al-Qaeda's back in business. ISIS is back in business. And if you're a Democrat and you're listening to this and you can say, oh, well, that's just a po politically motivated statement, then you don't get it. Oh, by the way, it's coming to you, too. The chickens will come home to roost. All of this stuff. And again, I don't know if YouTube's going to let me get out. They, they likely won't. But I will tell you, all of this stuff is going to play out in the days ahead. And just like we saw this morning waking up to another terrorist plot thwarted, I got to tell you, folks, I used to do this. I'm still in contact with folks that do. It's very rare that you're able to interdict these things. So that tells me that there are a lot more plots, probably more sophisticated, that are getting ready to be executed. Now the time is when, and the targets are where. We've talked about this before. That means that you have to be prepared. I mean, I, I, I don't know how to say it any, any, any better. You better have a plan for yourself. Do you have food storage? Do you have the ability for water? Do you have the ability to protect yourself? Do you have a place to go if you're in an extended period of no power, infrastructure down? What's your plan? That's the question. Because, folks, I'm going to tell you, I believe, and you know me, if you've followed me, I'm a man of faith. I believe what the Bible prophesies about what is to come. I am <laughs> a hopeless patriot. I love my country. I've served my country my whole life. And yet I also know that this is not the America anymore that we were raised in. So the question is this, it's very simple. What are you and I willing to do about it? That's simple. Because talk's cheap. And I want to remind you that many in 1930s Germany chose to believe, oh, it's going to get better. Hitler's really not that bad. The threat's not that great. And it cost them everything. It cost them their country. It cost many of them their lives. They were taken over by invaders. And all the while, no one stood. Now we're hearing the same rhetoric here, death to Jews, 
death to America. We're watching organized plots manifest themselves. We're watching our leadership do nothing about I I can't process how our leaders could swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Folks, you know, I, I was just on with Jesse Waters last week talking about across every single federal agency, IRS, FBI, ATF, Secret Service, you've got agents that are going, whoa, 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 wait, something's really wrong. These defund the police movements and the DEI movements, they are crippling our ability to do our mission. Folks, that means that, now think about that, just from the Secret Service, that's personal to me. But man, I'll tell you what, I hope and pray that the brightest and the best surround the president to protect them. If we begin to put politically correct people in there, that means that the security is not as good as it needs to be. I just can't understand how we've fallen so far so fast. And so I've got to ask you, What are you going to do about it? Are you willing to get engaged? Are you willing to every day begin to notify your congressional leadership that this is not working, that crime is out of control, the economy's crazy, we are being eaten from within, nobody has faith in the justice system, nobody has faith in some of our law enforcement agencies because they're concerned that the leaders are following an agenda that's not consistent with supporting and defending the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Folks, I'm just, you know, you probably can tell when I woke up this morning, it was like having been in that world. It's like, man, it doesn't get any clearer. I just hope that people that love our country, that love your kids, love your grandkids, love your brothers, love your sisters, are willing to stand because this is going in a direction pretty quickly that's not good. And so I want to ask you as I wrap up, what does that mean for you? What are the action steps? Well, here are some things I would consider. I would consider getting very engaged in local politics, uh, going to school board meetings, standing where you can against the tidal wave, definitely calling your congressional leaders and demanding that more sanity comes back to our country again. You know, I think everybody's talking about, well, it'll all be taken care of in November. No, it won't. No, it won't, because half the country's divided against the other half. So conversations are in order. Now, we know that many of those conversations can become heated. But folks, I'd much rather stand for something than fall for everything. And I think we all agree that if we wake up and there are October 7th style attacks across all of our nation, innocent people have been butchered. We're all going to go, man, I should have done more. I hope that's you. I I, I hope you're listening to this. And let me just say this, please, please, older folks, share this with your kids. Ask them the question, what kind of America do you want to live in? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you get caught up in social issues or economic issues, and you're not thinking about the safety and security of our nation surviving an invasion right now, let me give you a piece of advice. You're not going to have to worry about those other issues. They will be dictated to you. So the key is, what are you willing to do about it? What things are you willing to do? What can you do today to get engaged in the fight? You know, I was reminded my dad used to tell stories in World War II about 
folks just not being able to serve in the military, but they were all serving. They would go down and, and work in, you know, defense factories, or they would go volunteer, or they would go help folks that were suffering because, you know, when you go to a war economy and <laughs> other things are going to slip. My mom talks about, you know, you got a ration card and, and you only got certain things. Well, um, well, I tell you, that's not the America we live in where people would be willing to sacrifice. But but let me above all, above everything I've said, let me encourage you, if you're a person of faith to pray, and if you're not a person of faith to pray, because this mess is expanding at, at a level that, quite frankly, I've never seen in my years. And I just want to encourage you that you can make a difference one person at a time. Uh, make sure you vote. Make sure your voting process is held accountable. Ask questions of your school board. Folks, this stuff that's attacking our children, th this ideology of craziness, it's not going to be stopped until people with integrity and character are willing to stand up and go, no, 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 we're not having that anymore. Don't be afraid of woke policies. Don't be afraid of standing for truth in the cancel culture. I'd rather be canceled over the right thing than stand with the wrong thing. And so I hope and pray this is helpful for you. I know this is a this is one where, man, I think a storm's coming that we can't even wrap our head around. And so I'm going to continue to put stuff out and and hopefully it's encouraging to you, but I, I really would appreciate if you'd like, share, subscribe, you know, to the channel, because I know uh, I've seen the analytics, not much of what I put out is making it out. And I think it can help people at least, you know, with, as you know, with most of my stuff, I try to equip you with mental, physical, or emotional skills for dealing with a crisis. But um, I hope this spurs people to think. And so, as always, I love your comments, even if you don't agree with me. That's why I love America. <laughs> it's why I was a Marine, because you can feel the way you want. You can speak freely. There are a lot of things we have that just aren't found anywhere else. And that's where I hope and pray that in the days ahead, America can continue to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. So stay safe. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. I'll I'll respond to your comments and uh, let's work together. Let's stay safe out there and care for each other and care for our country. Mostly let's ask our God to intervene. So stay safe, brothers and sisters. We'll see you next time.